In the opening scene, we see Abigail is alone in a theater practicing her ballet dancing. At the same time, a bunch of bad guys are planning to do something bad. One of the criminals, who is good with computers, turns off all the cameras in Abigail's house so no one can see what they're doing. Another criminal, who is good with guns, goes up on the roof to watch from above. When Abigail finishes dancing and leaves, her driver picks her up in the car. Right when Abigail's car starts to drive away, the kidnappers start their plan. The person who's good with computers unlocks the doors of Abigail's house without being there. Then three of the bad guys quietly go into Abigail's bedroom and hide behind chairs and tables. When Abigail gets back home, she goes to her bed, not knowing they're there. That's when the bad guys come out and go after her. A man tries to grab Abigail and hold her still, but she fights back by stabbing his hand with a pencil. Then, another man tries to help by covering her mouth and holding her, while the first man wants to hit her. But the woman in their group doesn't want them to hurt a child, so she stops him. Instead, she gives Abigail a shot that makes her fall asleep. Meanwhile, the rest of their team is outside. They tell the ones inside that another car is coming. The man with the gun watches the new car carefully. In a rush, the three inside wrap Abigail in a bag and escape through a window, and they all get away safely. While they're driving, they make sure Abigail is okay by checking her heartbeat, and they put a cloth over her eyes so she can't see. They're about to hit a busy road, but the computer expert tells the driver to go a different way. They manage to get to an old, empty house outside of town without being caught. This is where they meet Lambert, the person who told them to do all of this. After they tie Abigail to a bed with handcuffs, Lambert tells everyone what they can and can't do. He says they shouldn't tell each other their real names or talk about their pasts, and they shouldn't get involved with each other romantically. They have to watch Abigail for a whole day until her wealthy father pays a ransom of $50 million. Lambert keeps who her father is a secret and takes away everyone's phones so no one can find them. Before he goes, he gives each person a secret name based on a famous group called the Rat Pack. After the kidnapping, the criminals start drinking and having fun in the house. And Joey doesn't want to share her candy with Dean, who acts like he's clever and tries to figure out everyone's past but he's wrong every time. When Joey teases him for getting it wrong, so the others bet money to see if she can guess better, she looks at how they act, what they wear, and their personalities, and she gets everyone's past right. She figures out that Frank was a police detective. Peter is a not-so-smart guy who works for criminals. Sammy is rich and just thinks this crime is a game. Rickles used to be in the military and is good with a rifle, and Dean is a dangerous driver who doesn't care about right or wrong. After that, Joey goes to see how Abigail is doing, and Abigail says the cloth over her eyes is too tight. Joey feels sorry for her, so she gently takes it off and also fixes the handcuffs because they're hurting Abigail's wrists by putting them in front of her instead. Since Abigail is upset and crying, so Joey tries to calm her down by saying they're not going to hurt her. They just want the ransom money. They make a pinky promise on it. And then Joey opens up and says she has a son and Abigail confesses that the kidnappers have got it wrong because her dad doesn't really care about her. As Joey is getting ready to go, Abigail tells her she feels bad about something bad that might happen to Joey. This makes Joey worried, so she goes back to her group and tells Frank that Abigail's dad might be a dangerous person. Frank thinks Abigail is just trying to make Joey upset, but when no one is paying attention, Frank goes to see Abigail. He's surprised to find her without the blindfold and quickly hides his face and points his gun at her. He makes her promise she didn't see his face. Then he keeps asking her questions until she tells him her father's name is Christoph Lazar. Hearing this, Frank gets very scared, rushes to his team, and tells them he's leaving. So the others demand an explanation. And Frank tells them that the girl they've kidnapped is the daughter of Christoph Lazar, who is a dangerous and powerful criminal leader. Rickles and Joey know who he is too, and they're just as worried as Frank. They start arguing about what they should do next. Finally, they all agree to stick around to get the ransom money. They plan to use this money to run away and start over somewhere far away. They decide to be careful, watch the area around the house, and keep all the doors locked. While Joey is wandering around the house, she spots an old statue showing a dad with his kid. While she's doing this, she runs into Rickles. He tries to charm her, but it doesn't work. He confides in her that he doesn't really trust the rest of their group, and they decide to support each other. At the same time, Sammy is in another room with a TV and gets scared when someone sneaks up on her. It turns out to be Dean, 
who thought it would be funny to scare her. He then tries to flirt with Sammy, but she's not in the mode and makes him leave the room. Then, Dean walks around the house and sees a lot of old photos in a dark hallway, one of which looks like it could be Abigail. He goes down to the basement kitchen and a door mysteriously opens on its own. He walks in, gets scared by a rat, and tries to leave. But suddenly, something he can't see grabs his legs and pulls him back, and Sammy hears Dean screaming and runs down to the basement. She sees Dean sitting at a table, but when she gets close to him, his head falls off, which shocks and disgusts her so much that she vomit. Soon the others arrives in the basement and they all think Sammy isn't strong enough to have hurt Dean. They start thinking about a scary guy named Valdez who works for Lazar. They remember hearing stories about how he's really dangerous. A long time ago, three important people who worked for Lazar got caught by the FBI. They were supposed to go to court, and the night before, they were hiding in a hotel on the highest floor with lots of security guards watching. The next day, the FBI rushed into a room and found that three people had been killed in a horrible way. This scary story makes the group nervous, so they go to make sure the girl they kidnapped is okay, and she is. Rickles is really afraid of Valdez, a dangerous man they've heard about, and he wants to get out of there. But when he tries to leave through the front door, they find locked gate they didn't know about. Peter tries to force it open, but he can't, and suddenly a security system activates, sealing all the windows with covers. Now, they realize they can't get out of the house, and Joey figures out that they've been tricked and are in danger, so Rickles panics and goes to get his gun, but only to find it gone. Then Joey quickly goes to Abigail to ask if she's seen anyone else around, but Abigail promises she hasn't seen anyone except Joey and Frank. Afterward, Abigail tells Joey some scary things. Frank said he would hurt her, he claimed he works for her dad, and he revealed his true name is Valdez. Later, Joey meets with Rickles and they both share what they know, concluding it doesn't make sense, and they decide to find a way to escape. When Joey is about to leave, she hears something strange. When she sees Rickles standing in a weird way and finds out he's been badly hurt, and he dies in her arms, and she gently lays him down before running downstairs. Joey is really angry and points her gun at Frank, thinking he is Valdez and that he hurt Rickles. Frank gets his gun out too and tells Joey that Abigail is tricking her. He tells Peter to go and take care of Abigail, which means to kill her. But when Peter is about to do it, Joey stops him just in time. Then Sammy and Frank show up, and they all start arguing about what to do next. While everyone is busy, Abigail slips out of the handcuffs without any trouble and stands up. She does a ballet move and reveals a big secret. She's a vampire. Then she attacks Peter, trying to bite him, but Frank shoots her before she can and everyone is stunned when Abigail gets back up as if nothing happened, even though she was shot. Joey tries shooting her too, but it doesn't work. Abigail isn't hurt by the bullets, so they all run away and lock the room. Afterward, they start talking about what to do next because they figure out that Abigail was the real Valdez. Everyone is feeling nervous and scared. When Peter suggests they calm down, Frank gets angry and silences him by grabbing his neck in a threatening way. Finally. Frank and Joey decide to make sharp weapons out of pool cues, and Sammy searches the kitchen for garlic. Joey doesn't want to join in because she's worried that if they hurt Abigail, her powerful father will be even more angry with them. Once they gets ready and runs into Abigail's room, but she's not there, suddenly they hear music from another room and find Abigail dancing with Dean's dead body. She acts like she's innocent, but when Sammy tries to fight her, Abigail fights back and isn't bothered by the garlic Sammy has. Frank gets knocked away when he tries to step in, but Peter lifts Abigail up. But she's too strong though and throws Peter down. She even grabs the cross from his necklace and hits him with it, showing that crosses don't hurt her either. Seeing this, Frank tries to sneak up on Abigail and stab her, but she's too quick for him and stabs him in the leg instead. Feeling defeated, Frank and the others go back downstairs where Joey takes care of their injuries and reminds them about a time when they were able to make Abigail fall asleep with a drug. They still have some of that drug left, and they decide to search the house separately. And if someone finds Abigail, they'll tell Joey over their earpieces. That way, Joey can inject Abigail with the drug. While searching, Sammy walks down a dirty hallway and gets scared by bats which makes her fall into a pool. She screams when she realizes the pool is full of dead bodies, and she has to crawl over them to get out. Meanwhile, Abigail catches Peter by surprise, 
and he gets so scared that he runs away and locks a door to stop her. But Abigail is strong and breaks the door down, chasing Peter with graceful moves like a ballet dancer. Peter is running away as fast as he can, but then Frank accidentally hits him with a door, making Peter fall over a railing. Next, Abigail goes after Frank, knocking him down the stairs and then sitting on top of him. And Joey sees a good moment to try and give Abigail a shot with a needle, but Abigail knocks Joey's hand away and the needle goes flying off somewhere they can't get to it. Sammy then grabs Abigail to pull her off, but Abigail bites Sammy's arm in response. Next, Abigail grabs Frank's leg and starts to fly up in the air with him. But then, Peter jumps on her, which makes her let go of Frank. Peter keeps Abigail on the ground, and Joey gets the needle. And she gives Abigail the shot quickly. So Abigail says some mean things to Joey and threatens her, but then she falls asleep. Soon, Sammy gets scared and starts to worry if she's going to turn into something else because Abigail bit her. Not long after, Abigail is awake, but she's trapped in an elevator. Joey tells her that if she tells them how to escape, they will set her free. But Abigail admits that she was behind the whole plan and that Lambert is actually one of her employees. She even knows a lot about each of them. Sammy began by stealing from her wealthy parents and later targeted a big-time criminal. Peter was the tough guy for a criminal group and even took money from his own team. Frank was a detective who went undercover in a crime group, but then he started liking the criminal life. And Joey used to be a medic in the army but got kicked out because she got drug addicted. She left her son with his bad father and started working as a secret doctor for criminals. However, Joey made a mistake during a medical procedure and a gang member died. Everyone in the group has done something bad to Lazar or his gang before. So Joey thinks Abigail is hurting her dad's enemies because she wants her dad to love her. But Abigail didn't attack them right away because she enjoys playing with her victims. And she offers to spare two of them if they release her. But when Frank wants to kill her instead, she gets mad and says she'll only spare one person who helps her escape. Peter tries to shoot his way out but Joey and Frank tell him Abigail is tricking them. Peter doesn't listen and tries to free Abigail, so Joey shoots him. After that, everyone except Frank leaves the area as he decides to stay and keep watch. The others leave, and Frank tells Abigail he will set her free if she shows him the way out. Abigail tells him that pulling a book by Agatha Christie in the library will reveal a hidden door. Frank is grateful for the information, but decides not to let her go. Then Abigail breaks through the door, pushes Frank aside, and starts moving towards him with dance steps. Just when things are looking bad, Joey comes in and tears some wood off a window, letting the sunshine pour in. The sunlight touches Abigail's hand and it starts to burn up, so she dashes to a dark corner to heal herself. Meanwhile, Joey and Frank take this chance to escape. They all get to the library and stay in the spots where the sunlight is shining through the window Joey had opened before. Sammy is worried she might change into something else because of the bite, but when nothing happens to her in the sunlight, she feels relieved and hopeful that she won't change. Later, Frank tries pulling a book that Abigail told him about, hoping it would open a secret door, but it doesn't work because she wasn't telling the truth. He gets really upset about it. Afterward, Joey is trying to break through a wall, but she can't. She's also feeling nervous because she's out of candy. Then Joey shares with Sammy that she left her son to get better from her addiction and she was hoping the money from this job would help her go back to him and start fresh. When Sammy hears Joey use the word reset, she gets an idea that if they can find where the power comes from, she might be able to unlock the doors. So, they decide to split up and look around the house for the power source. But suddenly Abigail starts playing music, and somehow, because she bit Sammy earlier, she can now make Sammy do what she wants. And Sammy turns into a vampire fast, and goes after Peter biting him on the neck. While Abigail is feeding on Peter, she's also speaking to him using Sammy's voice, and she doesn't stop until Peter is dead. After that, Abigail enjoys making Sammy dance just like she does. When Joey and Frank show up, Sammy hides her face from them. The others start to feel that something isn't right, so Sammy reveals that she's become a vampire. Joey and Frank are scared and run away. Sammy follows them to the library. There, Abigail speaks through Sammy and says she doesn't like the library because it's where her father made her into a vampire. Joey uses a tray to bounce sunlight onto Sammy, which makes her blow up. Just then, a hidden door opens. 
Even though Joey and Frank are worried it might be another trick, they choose to go through the door. Joey and Frank walk down a hallway and end up in a room that controls the whole house. They meet Lambert there, and he's a vampire too. Lambert grabs Joey tightly and starts telling them his story. Two years ago, Abigail turned him into a vampire after she found out he helped Frank get into her dad's criminal group. Now, Lambert's job is to bring people who are enemies of Lazar to the mansion for Abigail to mess with. Lambert has already told Lazar about what's happening, and Lazar is on his way there. And now Lambert wants to get rid of both Abigail and Lazar, so he offers to make Frank a vampire too if Frank helps him. Frank says yes to the plan. Lambert then knocks Joey unconscious and bites Frank to start turning him into a vampire. When Joey wakes up, she sees Frank going through a lot of pain as he changes into a vampire. Afterward, Lambert tells Frank to bite Joey and drink her blood. But instead, Frank surprises Lambert by stabbing him with a sharp wooden stick, which makes Lambert burst into pieces. Just then, Abigail shows up and tries to fight them, but Frank is stronger and starts to drink her blood. While this is happening, Joey quickly goes to the control panel, turns off all the security systems, and gets her phone back. But when Joey is trying to escape through a hidden passage but finds the way out is locked. Meanwhile, Frank is attacking Abigail. Joey tries to call her son and leaves him a moving message. When Frank finds Joey, he forces her back into the library and starts to violently attack her. Joey fights back, but since Frank is a vampire, she can't hurt him. Just as Frank is about to seriously hurt Joey, Abigail saves her. Abigail admits she's too weak to fight Frank by herself and pleads with Joey to help her defeat him, promising that Joey can then go to see her son. As Frank comes closer, Joey and Abigail try to fight him together, but Frank is much stronger than both of them. Frank defeats Abigail and then attacks Joey, pinning her to a pillar with wooden stick. He returns to Abigail, biting her once more while she signals Joey with her pinky finger, reminding her of a promise they made. After Abigail is incapacitated, Frank removes the stick from Joey's shoulder and bites her neck, then tosses her to the ground. When Joey regains consciousness, Frank uses his supernatural abilities to compel her to take the stick and attack Abigail. However, Joey is only acting when she seems to be under Frank's control. She suddenly turns and shoves Frank, which allows Abigail to attack him. While Frank is busy with Abigail, Joey gets the wooden stick and uses it to bring Frank down. Then, Joey and Abigail work together to stab Frank with the stick, causing him to burst. And after that, Joey is scared she might turn into a vampire too. But Abigail assures her that won't happen now that Frank is gone. True to her word, Abigail releases Joey and urges her to reunite with her son. Then, unexpectedly, someone touches Joey's shoulder. It's Lazar, who reveals he's had many different names over time. He initially intends to harm Joey, but Abigail intervenes arguing that Joey saved her life and being supportive in his absence. Acknowledging this, Lazar shows his appreciation by kissing Joey's hand and allowing her to leave. Joey hurries to her van, finds one last lollipop, and enjoys it as she drives off. 